Hi everyone, my name's Tom, and welcome to my next video. Uh, I'm out here in southern Utah on my land, my, my family's land. Uh, my wife and I bought land here in southern Utah uh, a few years ago, seven, eight years ago maybe. And I just took delivery of a brand new John Deere 3025D. Uh, same tractor as an E, um, but it has a gear drive. Uh, instead of a hydrostatic. Um, if you've looked into equipment at all or if you're an equipment owner, uh, you know all larger equipment only comes in manual. There are no hydrostatics. Um, that was one incentive for me to go with a manual. Um, and the hydrostatic, I just didn't want to have a problem with the hydrostatic and have you know debris go through the entire hydraulic system and sort of you know make the tractor not worth the, the cost of repair. So for me, the manual, if I have to throw a clutch at it at some point in the future, fine. Um, I just think the manual's probably got a, uh, a better life expectancy for the kind of work that I want to do out here and being so remote, I just don't want to take any chances. Um, it's funny, when I looked at both the Kubota and the John Deere, uh, both of them said that they'd have to order the tractor, they didn't carry any manuals, and uh, some of them weren't even sure if in a 25 horse tractor if they if they could get uh, a manual transmission. But I did my research and um, you know worked it out with the dealer. I got my tractor from Stotts uh, in Utah here. I live in St. George and they have a dealership in St. George right by my house. Uh, great people. Um, they don't even know I'm mentioning them in this video, so it's not it's not anything paid or anything like that. It's just. Uh, Good people there. Uh, they treated me right and uh, enjoyed working with them. Uh, so yeah, so like I said, it's a 3025, it's 25 horse uh, John Deere, brand new, manual transmission, uh, high low range, four speed uh, gearbox, all wheel drive. Um, some of you probably know the tractor or know something similar to it. Um, I got a 300E loader on the front of it, which is the appropriate loader for this size tractor. Also have a box scraper, which I'll take you around the back here and, and show you some of the options I got on the back of it. Okay, so here we are at the back of the tractor. Uh, box scraper, pretty standard. Um, you know, for me, that was one of the main reasons why I wanted to get a tractor was to be able to dress my driveway out here annually. Uh, you know, do it on my own without having to pay somebody or get together on somebody else's schedule or you know whatever inconvenience it might have been. Uh, just for me. I wanted to be able to do projects on the land by myself. I'm about 50 miles outside of a little town called Kanab. Maybe 8,000 people live there, so you know it gives you an idea of the size of the town. And uh, you know, being that being that remote, it's hard to get people out here, and it's expensive. Um, or the people that you do, you know, find out here that have equipment, they got their own projects and stuff going on. So. Uh, it, it was worth it for me to, to make the investment. And a box scraper, you know, the main thing I wanted to do was dress this driveway. Uh, something that you don't normally see on a tractor this size, I did go for the fourth and fifth valve, as well as the control box, rather than a diverter switch and use the, the joystick for the front loader. Um, got this nice uh, lever box here, uh, control box, and uh, so that controls this, the hydraulic side link and the hydraulic top link. Um, so that'll allow me to curl the box as well as yaw the box um, instead of just having the, the three-point lift and a, and, a, and a screw side link um, and I guess a screw top link as well but for me because I'm so steep here about 17 percent grade going up at this point for about an eighth of a mile and you know close to 17 percent grade going down for you know probably about half that distance is going up from here this is just happens to be a very steep area. Um, I can only really go in one direction. You probably know that uh, using equipment like this, you always want to work downhill and use gravity to your advantage. So um, if I was going um, you know, down one side with the box tilted and then I needed to come up and come down the other side, I'd have to get out and screw the box, uh, articulate the box in a different direction manually. Now I can just do it from these levers. Uh, in fact, why don't I just start it up here and show you what I, what I mean. So we'll lift the uh, box blade up off the ground a little bit and uh, so the first thing I can do is I can tilt it, 
which is great. Um, so that'll allow me to put in my curbs or crown my crown my driveway a little bit, um, you know, without having to get off the machine and screw something. And it, it just it, it seemed like a huge inconvenience to, to try and do it that way. So uh, having the hydraulics makes it a lot easier, a lot faster. I don't have to stop the machine. I just keep working. And then the curl. Um, it's nice to be able to curl your box blade. Um, that's a lot of articulation for a box blade. I probably wouldn't use quite that much articulation, but it's there if I need it. And if I'm using a different implement, um, both of these adjustments will come in really handy for like an auger. If I'm on the side of a hill, but I want to you know, drill a hole straight up and down, being able to tilt it is going to be a huge help. Uh, and maybe even the curl as well, the in and out on the top link. So both of those I thought were great. One thing I really like about the John Deere, um, you know, I looked at competitive products, but one thing I really liked about the, uh, the John Deere was um, they have a scale here for the box blade or for the three point. And uh, you just put the lever at the number. Um, it's not perfect, but you know, you get the, you get the lever in a position. And if you lift up the box blade or lower the box blade and you come back to that first position, it'll be generally in the same place. It even has a little mechanical lock so that you can, you know, quickly, you know, lift the box blade up, come over your, your uh, pile of dirt, drop it back down to where you were and back up and, and level out the ground. So it's not a memory per se, but it has a, it has a reference where you can always kind of be in the same place uh, time after time when you, if you do have to lift it up while you're working, you can always get back down to the same level. The Kubota wasn't like that. The Kubota just has, you know, movement up and movement down and strictly beyond you um, to get it back in the same place. And you can't see your hydraulic link. So to put a rod on it or something, there's just, you know, there's no way to do it on the Kubota. So, you know, it was really the people that made the difference, but, but that feature uh, just really reinforced my decision to, to get the John Deere. Um, 25 horse, beat juice in the tires. Uh, try and get as much weight on the tractor as possible. Um, other than that, you know, it's pretty standard. Um, I got an auger in there. Probably get a, a single tooth ripper at some point. And, um, you know, who knows what other toys I'll get for it over time. But we'll see. But the box blade is also a nice counterweight for your end loader. So rather than buying a, a box just to carry some weight around, uh, you know, out here I don't have any fence line. I don't have any problems. I can leave both of these on the, the machine most of the time and I'm gonna be fine. Um, yeah, if I had a fence, I might, you know, having the bucket on could be a problem while I'm going along the fence line, or if I was mowing the grass, I wouldn't want the box scraper on maybe, but um, I'll, I'll take some shots here of my land and you'll see that's not a problem for me. So first my driveway, you know, like I said, it's a 17% grade uh, from here up and uh, so that's quite steep. So having the ability to adjust that box blade, um, yaw, uh, right to left, uh, and, and crown the road, um, it, it was a big deal for me. And uh, that's a great feature. I'm, I, I've already used it a lot. And I've only been on the machine for three hours out here. Um, if we keep looking around to the north, um, you see these beautiful pink cliffs. You know, it was one of the main reasons why I really liked this lot versus some of the other lots that were out here. Um, as about a mile and a quarter away to the Pink Cliffs, and it is just, you know, it's really stunning. Um, love it, absolutely love it. You can't beat the view. I mean, that's Dixie National Forest. Um, my, my actually my north border is Dixie National Forest, uh, which is a strip of the forest that runs parallel to Bryce. And then um, I got about 20 acres here and it's just raw land. Driveway was cut before I came in uh, and bought the place. So, you know, I wasn't gonna redesign the driveway and, and leave scars on the earth that weren't being used. Um, so we just, we'll just deal with it. You know, we got the ugly truckling here. Uh, the ugly truckling is what I call <laughs> affectionately refer to my uh, 2000 F250 7.3 power stroke diesel. Um, so that little pad where it's parked, you know, hopefully that's going to be a pad where we can park a camping trailer in the future and, 
you know, maybe put a permanent structure there eventually, but at least a carport to put a camping trailer under. So there's a lot going on out here. We've been out here for a few years. We've had some help so far getting this far, uh, but I can do a lot more uh, on my own now. So uh, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna shut the camera down. I'm gonna go to work. And if I have a chance at the end of the day, I'll, I'll turn the camera back on and we'll shoot some more video and I can show you some of the work that we did. All right, thanks, bye.